Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's YouTube Live. Thank you so much for making time to be here with me. I am excited about tonight's project. It is a fun fold, but I'm adding a brayering technique to this project that I'm excited to share with you. I've learned some tips about this technique that I'm going to be sharing during tonight's live. Now, if you're here for the live, just a couple things I want you to know. Number one, you'll need to sign into your Gmail account, which is to your YouTube channel, so that you're able to chat if you want to chat. The other thing is I want to meet, I want to introduce you to Megan. I wanted you to meet her. Megan's name is in blue off to the side. She is my virtual YouTube assistant. She is here to help interact with you and answer your questions because when I'm busy stamping, it's hard to catch all of those. Rest assured though that I come back and I read every single comment after tonight's live is over. That's about it. What do you guys say that we get started, okay? I'm gonna turn the camera down and we'll get focused in and we'll get beginning. Here we go. Okay, let me get you all squared away here. Move you in, give that camera just a subtle second to settle. Boy, I'm having a hard time talking tonight. Anybody ever have those moments? All right, some of you might be looking at this trimmer thinking, where did you get this lickety split thing? Well, guess what? This is the brand new paper trimmer that Stampin' Up! demonstrators were able to pre-order in the month of October. Now, it's not available for customers just yet, but hang tight. The wait is going to be worth it. I will tell you lots of cool things about it. I'm just going to go over it really quickly because I know I'll have lots of questions about this if I don't. There is an extension arm here that opens up to 17 and a quarter inches, so you can cut lots of paper on this. It does lock in. You can hear it snap. There is both a cutting blade and a scoring blade. So the scoring is the lighter of the two. The one thing I really like about this is these blades will navigate up and down out of the way. So you don't have to worry about them impeding. The other thing is there's a great clear glide so that you're able to cut and score. Love that there's a handle here to pick up the cutting track. And did you notice that? Listen, it locks in, which means if you're taking this to a crop or to a friend's house, you don't have to worry about anything falling out along the way. Love that feature. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be scoring. So I wanna make sure my cutting blade is up and out of the way. And I'm gonna need to open up the arm for this. That's extended here. I'm gonna try to get most of it inside your camera view, so bear with me here. The other thing I've got is a piece of crumb cake cardstock. Now I'm gonna put all the cutting dimensions in the link down in the video description below after tonight's live. So just give me a few minutes after we're all done, Megan and I will come back and work all that in for you. So it'll be easy for you to navigate to all the cutting and the scoring dimensions, as well as the pictures and the supplies. So the first score line on this paper is going to be at four and a quarter. So I'm gonna line that up here at the top. The other thing I wanted to point out, did you notice how the lines go all the way down? You gotta love that. That's gonna help us keep our paper nice and straight. So I wanna make sure I got myself all lined up here. Four and a quarter using my light blade and then we'll score. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over to eight and a half and that's gonna be all the way over here on the extension. And I'm gonna put that down and then I am going to score as well. All right, so there we go. We got two score lines. I know they're going to be really, really tough for you to see during the live. Let me just set that out of the way. Um, they're there. What we're going to do first is I'm going to score. I'm sorry. I'm going to crease on those score lines. I want them to be prominent enough for me to be able to see my next step. All right, now for this, I'm going to cover up my work surface, and I'm using one of the large grid papers these are really like two and a half times the size of the normal grid papers that I use. But I'm gonna be creating a brayering technique and you wanna make sure you protect your work surface. You don't want ink on there, that's for sure. Now I'm gonna be using a brand new um, mask. This is from the Basic Patterns Decorative Masks. This is the polka dot. Now I'm gonna set that aside because I wanna show you what else comes in this package. There are, there are some trees, look at those, love those. It's gonna be great for guide cards too. And I'm gonna call these leaves, aren't those neat? Love that. And then last but not least, I love this damask pattern. Isn't that fun? Now you're gonna notice that they're a little shiny because that makes them really easy to clean. So you can wipe them off when you're all finished. I actually take mine over to the laundry tub and I just rinse them underneath tap water and either blot them between some paper towels or let them air dry. 
and then you can use them over and over again. You're going to find that product in the holiday catalog. I bet you overlooked it. <laughs> it's in there. So we're going to go over the, some of those other things in there as well. So here's the, here's the card that we're going to be creating. Now, it's going to end up being a fun fold, and there's going to be a lot more to this, but we're not quite there yet. And I can see I'm just a smidgen off. Do you guys see that on my score line? So we're going to adjust that. Let's see if we can fix that here. This is where your bone folder comes in handy. Do you see how I've got a little bit of a bubble here? I don't know if you guys see that or not. Okay, so I'm going to take my bone folder. I'm going to move it across. You know, sometimes if you're off by just a 16th or even a 32nd of an inch, it can create a little bit of a gap. And that's just a good tip for you. I'm going to be doing my brayering right here on the front of the card. I had difficulty covering the whole thing without anchoring all this down. So I'm going to show you what I did. And of course, you've probably got your own tips that you can share down in the comments here. But I am using this low tack frog tape. I'm going to show you the package. Um, my husband, Bob the Builder, that's what we call him, purchased this for me at a local hardware store. And I swear by this stuff. I have had problems with washi tape actually ripping my cardstock. So I love this. This works out really well. The first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to fold that back because I don't want that to have ink on it. I'm going to add a little bit of frog tape up here in the corner. And I'm going to add a little bit of tape right down here at the bottom. You can see I'm covering very, very little here. I'm going to move you in a little closer so that you can see a little better. Let me move my paper up. All right. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay the mask here. Now, because I'm going to be doing some brayering, I want to make sure that I've got this anchored down well. I see, too, you guys got a little bit of a glare. Let me move you back out. There's nothing worse than a glare, huh? Okay, I think that's from the mask. So I'm going to take another piece of frog tape. This should do the trick. And I'm going to anchor this down. Now, I want to point this out to you. I am going to avoid anything that's going to have um, a tape over it. So I don't want to bring her over that because otherwise I'm going to have a miss mark. So I'm going to manipulate my template just a little bit. And since this doesn't really have a direction, I can turn it to make sure that the bottom and the top don't have tape marks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor that down. All right, that's good. We're good to go. Our area that we want to mask has already been completed and we're ready to brayer. I'm going to be using crumb cake ink. Now, one of the things I absolutely love about Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So the ink coordinates with the cardstock as well as our accessories designer paper, making it really, really easy for you to create projects. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And I've got one of the sponge brayers here. Now, let me tell you what I love about these. First of all, super easy to use. It is plastic. This can come out, you can take this right out of here. You can rinse them underneath tap water with a little bit of um, mild detergent like Dawn and then squeeze out the excess water and let them air dry and you can use them in other colors. You wanna make sure you get that pigmentation out. The darker colors have a, um, a deeper pigment to them so it'll stain the foam but it won't impede on its use with another color. So just make sure that you rinse those out really good. All right, so tip number one, when you're inking up the brayer, don't do this because then all you're doing is getting ink just right here. You need to kind of like be like a rolling pin, go all the way around and load it up with ink. Tip number two, check it. Sometimes it'll load too much ink, especially on a very dark color, and then you can't control the coverage. So I'm good here. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to work now over in this corner. And you can see I'm going all the way around the brayer. You don't want to do this unless you're just trying to get a little corner. So I'm going to come around here. I'm going to reload. I'm going to come back over here. Now, I know you're probably thinking that little sponge thing probably isn't doing too much. Well, you know what I've come to learn? When I lift the template, you are going to be shocked. So less is more. Remember, you can always take a peek and add more to this, but you can't take it away. So always say start light. All right. So I'm going to stop there. I am also looking for a variegated finish. I'm not looking for something that's completely solid from one side to the other. So there we go. I'm going to take a quick look. Do you see it? Isn't that cool? I love that. So we've got some light and dark areas. If you don't like it, guess what? You can just lay your template right back down and go back over it and fill in those spots. And that'll give you a little bit of control over what you're doing. Isn't that pretty? And you can see here that we have avoided the place where there is tape. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. This now, like I said, can get rinsed right underneath the sink and then set aside to dry. I'm going to put mine way over there. I'm going to close up this ink pad. We're not going to need this anymore right now. And like I said, too, we're going to rinse that out, make sure it's good and air dry, and I can use it on another card. So here's the beauty of that frog tape. Now we're going to go ahead and 
remove these pieces. And then we've just got our grid paper here. All right, so this now is our background. Let's work on the focal point. That's what's next. I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock here. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna round those corners. I'm gonna move you in just a little bit. I'm gonna move this out of the way for right now. And I'm gonna be using my detailed trio punch. I almost lost my mind for a second. I was like, what is this called? Do you guys ever have that moment? Does three things in one. I really love this. So this is gonna corner round. This gives you the perfect hole for those wider ribbons. I love that. And a beautiful decorative corner. The best way to use this is flat on your work surface so that you can press in the center. You're gonna to notice too that there are notches here and they're all the way around for the three different positions that will allow you to put your paper in to work specifically on that one side. So I'm gonna slide my corner up inside, making sure it's up all the way against those guides and then I'm gonna press. So I've got a rounded corner here. I'm gonna go now to the opposite corner and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So there we go, we've got two rounded corners. Easy scraps, we can clean those up. I'm gonna set that aside. I did the exact same thing on this now on two other pieces. I've got a piece of cherry cobbler and a piece of crumb cake. So we've got all of our three pieces here and all I did was corner around them exactly the same. Again, all those cutting dimensions will be in a link below when we're all finished. Okay, I'm gonna put that off to the side. Let's work on our focal point. So I'm grabbing a piece of cardstock here. Let's go ahead and use this other one that I've got out. And I'm gonna bring in my paper piercing mat for this. And you think for the life of me, I know where I put it. I had it right in front of me. Here it is. I have so much stuff on my desk. Anyone else can relate to that when you're stamping? All right, so we've got our pierce mat. And the one reason I'm gonna be using my pierce mat underneath my cardstock tonight is because I'm using a rather large and solid image. This is an important tip for you especially when it's photopolymer. I'm gonna be taking out this adorable cup image and I wanna show you where this is from. This is from the stamp set called Cup of Christmas. Do you see that there's two cups, both going different ways? So the handle's on one side and this handle's on the other side. Well, let me just tell you something about this stamp set. This is a patent pending design. I'm gonna slide this over because I think you can see it over this um, dark background a little bit better. This is reversible. I know you're probably thinking, no way. Yes, you can put this on your block so the handle is either on the left or on the right. Not only does it work for the stripe cup, it also works for this polka dot cup, which we're gonna use to coordinate with that um, background that we just did. All right, so I've got my scrap card stock here and I am going to use the early espresso ink first. I'm gonna set that one off to the side. This stamp set also includes an outline image. So for those of you that like to color or perhaps you wanna stamp it on designer series paper, you can absolutely do that. I'm gonna point that out to you here. There is lots of other fun things inside of here and I'm gonna go over those with you and show you all the cool things this does. Stick with me to the end of the video because I have other samples to show you using this exact same stamp set. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink up my little outline image here of my cup and I'm gonna stamp that here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna stick that off on my grid paper off to the side and I'm gonna close up that ink pad and I'm switching over now to Cherry Cobbler. I'm gonna open up this pad and I'm gonna ink up this image. Now remember, this is very large and very solid. And again, you could just switch it and make the handle go on the other side. The outline image is only for the right handled mug. I wanna make sure that I point that out, but there's lots of options and I've got other samples, like I said, to share with you. Lots of firm, even pressure. What this is doing is helping me press from the bottom up. And then there we go, we've got our mug. Isn't that adorable? Love that. Okay, so let me close this up and then let me show you the best part of this stamp set because it has coordinating dies. Don't you love this? Okay, we don't have to fussy cut a darn thing. So you can see here that there are dies for the mug either being on the right side or the left side. Keep in mind, this is a mirrored image because they're upside down. So all I did was I pulled out the appropriate die and I die cut the mug, which less left me with this. I'm just saving a little bit of time because I think most of paper crafters know what die cutting is. So we've got our mug here. Let me set these other pieces off to the side. I decided that my mug looked a little bit naked and I wanted to add a little bit of something else to it. And I thought, you know, hmm, I know I like whipped cream. So let's do this. I took a piece of white cardstock 
And I thought, what do I have to make this super easy and not labor intensive? And it was definitely this, the scalloped tag topper punch. So this is just a scrap piece of cardstock. It's about two inches wide, just a short scrap. I'm going to slide that in and I'm going to press. That's going to leave me this fun scalloped top. But you're probably thinking, well, what about that hole? Okay, well, let me show you what I'm going to do with that. I am going to bring now over my silicone craft sheet. And I decided to add a little bit of color around the edges of this so it wasn't so stark white. Because remember, I'm going to be doing some layering on my card. So I'm going to go back to the crumb cake ink. And I pulled out a sponge dauber, which I absolutely love because your finger goes up inside and it makes it really easy to use. I'm going to bring back over my grid paper for just a minute because I want to give you an important tip about when you use the sponge dauber. This is a much more dense foam than this. So really important that you check how much ink is on here because it gets loaded with ink very quickly. So tap it on your ink pad and then I want you to tap off. Can you see how dark it is? I don't want it that dark for the edges of this piece. So I wanna be able to control that coverage. So I'm gonna come up around the edges and I'm just gonna dab color on, just so we have a little bit of density there. I know that's gonna be hard to see probably. I'm gonna set that off to the side, we'll close this up. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add this whipped cream to this card, to this mug. All right, so I'm gonna flip that over and we're gonna add adhesive to the back. So I'm gonna add a couple rows. I'm gonna line this up here so that you can see it and watch. We are going to cover the hole. I am looking to try to center my whipped cream. Not that whipped cream ever goes in your cup perfectly. Wouldn't that just be a perfect world, right? But we have all this excess. So let me just give you a tip. Come in with your paper snips and I want you to cut away the rest. Whatever you don't need is not gonna see. We're just gonna cut this away. And then remember, I'm cutting from the back. I'm just cutting it really shallow. Do you see it's ugly from the back? Doesn't matter. And then I'm going to cut here, and that's going to leave us this. Isn't that adorable? Oh, so cute. And you know what? I can only tell you one other thing that's going to make it more cute is my one of my very favorite accessories, and that is my Wink of Stella. I'm going to bring back in my scratch paper to protect the work surface, and I've got my Wink of Stella pen here. So this is a shimmer pen. Love this. So if you don't like to mess with glitter and glue, this is the way to go. And I know you're probably not going to be able to appreciate this while I'm putting it on, but I'm going to lift it for you and let you see a little bit of that shimmer. It really kind of brings a little life to the top of that whipped cream. So there we go. Can you guys pick that up? Oh, it's so much fun. All right. Now we're going to move on to the front of this card. Do you remember this layer here? Let's go ahead and attach this to the cherry cobbler layer next. So I've got my silicone craft sheet here. I am a huge fan of this. If you've not watched my videos before, adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it. It rubs right off, which means you're going to keep your work surface sticky free. So what I'm going to take with this piece now is I'm going to flip it upside down. I want to make sure all my curves are going the right way. And I'm going to add adhesive in my four corners. And then I'm going to mirror this on top of the cherry cobbler layer that I cut. This is the same one that I did with the rounded corners. I'm gonna flip this upside down and I'm gonna layer it one more time. And this time it's going to go on top of the crumb cake that I cut. And that's gonna go here. I'm looking to try to leave an equal border all the way around. I didn't do so good at the bottom. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? It's live. It's okay. It means I'm not perfect. And it's handmade, right? Okay, I'm going to hold my cup here because I am not going to adhere it yet because I want to do one more thing. I'm going to add several other things to this cup, but I wanted to give this a little bit of a ground or a table surface because it looks like it's just floating here. So I'm going to hold it here to get an idea on positioning. And I'm going to bring in my Crumb Cake Alcohol-Based Stampin' Blends Marker. I'm gonna use the thicker tip. There's also a thin tip in case you wanna color in. I love these. I have always loved markers. I've always liked to color, but I find that this gives you flawless coverage when you're coloring in images versus dye-based markers. So if you haven't tried the Stampin' Blends alcohol markers, you can find them over in my online store at Lisa Stamp Studio. So I'm gonna take the cap off and I'm gonna get this ready. I'm gonna kind of line this up on where I'm gonna want it. Okay, I'm gonna hold it there and I'm like, okay, that looks good. And we're gonna add a little bit of a scribble there. Super easy, right? But I thought maybe it was a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna give you a tip. And if you're happy with it, that's fine. It's just a matter of preference. This is the color lifter. 
I like to call it the color mover. The great thing about this is not only will it lighten a shade that you've already placed down, it will actually move the color. So what I'm gonna do is use the thick end again. I'm gonna come over this and I'm just gonna rub that in. Now, because of the alcohol, it's going to need a few seconds for that to evaporate. So it's gonna be more of its true shade and you're gonna see how it starts to lighten up here. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip that cup over, that's that ugly backside where we did all of our little whipped cream and we're gonna add some dimensionals. I am very generous with my dimensionals because I know my cards are gonna get mailed for the most part. And I've got my mini dimensionals here and my take your pick pickup tool. I've got my paper piercing tool attachment on it. I can't live without this thing, love that. Those mini dimensionals fit perfectly here. And then what I'm gonna use is that tool pick to lift off those dimensional backings. I find three come off really, really easily, and I love that it kind of corrals all those little pieces. Isn't that wonderful? This now is going to get adhered here, right above that little scribble mark. So it looks like we've got a little bit of a table surface going on. And then I thought, you know what? Let's use some more of those dies. Now I did this part ahead of time, but I want to point it out to you. There is a word in here, yum, along with some other words that fit inside a die that's part of this bundle. There's a small die and a bigger die, and I wanna show you what I did with it. I'm gonna point out too, the bow. Look at that cute little bow. I created this. So I stamped the word yum on the white smaller tag that I die cut here. I bordered it on the dark, which is the early espresso, and I die cut that adorable little bow, and I used a tiny, tiny drop of liquid glue to adhere it because it's too tiny um, for a glue dot. I found that it showed just a little bit too much. Now I want to adhere this to this and the easiest way for me was to use glue dots. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to add one here to the back side and I'm going to add another one a little bit further down because I want to make sure it stays anchored on my card and that's going to go right here on my cup. Oh my gosh, is this not adorable? Okay, before we go too far, I did do one other thing and I wanna show this to you. I created a small strip of cardstock that I embossed and I used the swirls and curls embossing folder for this. I love the texture. One of the other things about this folder that I love is this side is the embossed or the raised side. This is the debossed side. So you can see that it looks quite different than this one. Gives you some variation too. So this is going to get adhered here to this side of the card, of the fun fold. So let me grab my silicone craft sheet once again. And I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to add adhesive on the deboss side because I decided I wanted to use the bumpy side tonight. That silicone craft sheet has saved me many times from fighting a sticky spot on my paper or my work surface the entire night. I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna line this up the best that I can, leaving an equal amount of space at the top, the bottom, and the sides. And then when I'm happy, I'm gonna press that in place. All right, for the inside of my card, same stamp set. I pulled out the words from the greetings that say, sending you a cup of cheer. And then I stamped the word Merry Christmas underneath it, all part of that stamp set. So all the pieces are here. I've used one entire stamp set. And you can see that I've only used several colors. I used the crumb cake, the cobbler, and the early espresso. I corner round it just like I did the tags, just for a little continuity. And then I'm going to add some adhesive in those four corners. This now goes on the inside of my cards. A lot of you say, don't you decorate the inside of your cards? And my answer is absolutely yes. Matter of fact, I did an entire video about what's on the inside. And the reason I usually don't decorate them when I create them is because I like to personalize the inside for who I'm going to send it to. So I finish it up before I put it in the mail. All right, so now we're ready to do the fun fold part. So we've got our fun background here. And here now we've got that layer. We are going to add some dimensionals strategically to this part. So I'm gonna flip this over and we are gonna work on the right side because remember the right side is gonna be the left side. So we're on the right side. I'm gonna take several of the large dimensionals and I'm gonna add it here and here. I'm gonna add another here. I'm gonna take two more and I'm gonna add them here at the top. Well, that was three. And I'm gonna add another one down here at the bottom. So we've got kind of like a U shaped here. And then I'm gonna take off the paper backings to these so that we can attach this to our card. I love that pickup tool, isn't that wonderful? Best $10 you'll ever spend, I'll tell you that. 
and then that's going to get it mounted here to the front center of the card. Again, you want to make sure that those dimensionals are positioned right. Otherwise, this card will not open and close. And then look, it opens up like this. Isn't this fun? This is so much fun. And then you can see very easily that it opens and closes. And it's very intuitive on how it's going to close because once they look at it, it's easy to figure out. The one reason I did not want to do a Christmas card with this is because a lot of people look at this and say, it's cup of Christmas, it's Christmas. Uh, no, it's not. And I've got other cards to prove to you that it's not. Of course, you can make it Christmas, but it doesn't have to be. This fold can be used with lots of different stamp sets as well. But isn't this adorable? And I love that it has dies. Lots of options for this. So let me share with you some other cards. Let me pull them out. The cards I'm going to share with you right now are all part of my monthly card kit. And this month, I am focusing specifically on the Cup of Christmas bundle, which would be the stamp set and the coordinating dies. When you place a $50 product order in my online store between today and Saturday, which would be October 12th, by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to have sending you a card kit to make a total of eight cards. You're going to get two each of these four different designs that I'm sharing with you here. I'm going to give you the pre-cut paper, the designer paper. I'm going to die cut the pieces for you that are not part of the bundle. So the pieces that are included in here, obviously you'll do that at home. I include all the scraps. You're going to get a video, a PDF tutorial, step-by-step -step instructions, cutting dimensions so that you can do them at home again and again. Use these exact same layouts. So there's going to be two of this card and two of this one. So slight variation in the designer papers. Okay, so these two are Christmas, but are you ready? Wait till you see what I've done here. This is not Christmas. So this is a card that can be sent to anyone and you can create it in any color. I'm gonna provide you with the stitch vellum for this layer as well. And of course the designer paper. My videos are loaded with tips. It's gonna make you, whether you are seasoned or a brand new stamper, super easy to achieve. And how about one for the guys? Yes, this stamp set works well. Do you guys notice too how I flipped the mugs around? So this one is going handle to the right, this one handle to the left. So I'll teach you all about the reversibility of those stamps. I used mercury paper here and that's going to be included in the card kit along with these pieces. Now, if you want your cards to look exactly like these, there's gonna be some things that you need. Now, let me flip the camera around real quick. I think that's better than watching talking hands, right? So if you want your cards to look exactly like mine, you're obviously gonna need a few color ink pads. You're gonna need some embellishments if you want those. I've got those things listed for you to make it super easy over on my website at lisasstampstudio.com. Click on the online classes tab at the top and you'll see card making kits. If you click on that, you'll find that there's pictures and a whole list of things that you can that you can order if you want them to look just like this. But here's the best part. I make ordering so easy for you and flexible. You can order whatever you want for the $50 in product. However, you must use an exclusive card making kit host code that is all on that card making kit page over on my website. It is the only way that I know that you are entitled to the free pre-cut supplies. So if you don't use it, I don't know. If your order happens to be $150 on product or more, do not use the host code because I want you to be able to enjoy the free stamp and rewards, which is free product for yourself. But you need to jot me down a quick email, click on contact me, and let me know that that order was intended for the card making kit so that I know to prepare one for you. Now I have a promised mail date for these kits no later than next Saturday, which is October 12th. But those of you that are here that have purchased card kits from me before knew that I'm usually a lot faster than that. But there's a bonus too that I also include for all of my card making kit customers. And that is a private invitation to an event called Live with Lisa. This event has now been moved to YouTube. So regardless if you were on Facebook or not, doesn't matter anymore. I send you a private link to an unlisted YouTube channel so that you can join me for a live event where I do numerous demonstrations. I'm gonna give you eight product tutorials and I give away prizes, products. Who doesn't love free stuff, right? If you want to join us for Live with Lisa, that's also part of my ordering rewards and you can do so with a minimum $25 product order 
before shipping and tax. Keep in mind the word product order is before shipping and tax. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to get these catalogs in your hands. There is amazing stuff inside of here. All you have to do is head over to lisastampstudio.com, click on contact me and just give me your information. I'll get it right off in the mail to you. I think that's it. One more thing I wanna make sure that you know, if you have enjoyed today's video, it is so important that you give it a thumbs up. It certainly helps here on YouTube. Like, comment, and share the video with your crafting friends. Head over to lisastampstudio.com, sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. It's sent on Thursdays. I share a tutorial there. I don't share on any of my other platforms that I know you'll enjoy. And I'm gonna be back live with you, ready? Monday, October 21st, I was glancing at my calendar, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a brand new product demonstration. And I hope that you will enjoy me. Mark your calendar to be here. Thank you, Megan, for all of your hard work. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Have a great night.